Welcome to Generosity Sunday. We finally arrived. I am so glad that we are here, and I'm really appreciative that you're here with us in person and our online campus as well. We are all together, Heights Church. You know, these last few weeks, we've been in a series called United. And you know, as a church, we get to decide how we move forward. We get to decide who we are. Yes? How we're going to behave, what we're going to think, what is going to be most important to us. And we have decided as we move forward into this next year that we're going to be united in love and we're going to be united to love. We're here to love God with our lives and to love others with our lives. Yes, it's a choice and we get to make this. We're united in our worship. Worship is not just about the words we sing. It's about every facet of my life being given in sacrifice to God. And do we do it perfectly? No. But is it our desire that we would give our lives in worship to God? Is this what we spend our lives doing is recognizing in gratitude that I get to offer to God my worship in my thoughts, my actions, and yes, my singing. By the way, you guys sounded way better today than you normally do. So good job. <laughs> and we're just, not only that, but we're united in mercy, receiving mercy and recognizing that it is the mercy of God that literally everything we receive and get to experience in the kingdom of God, it hinges on the mercy of God. Because without the mercy of God, we don't experience any of it. In fact, we're on the outside of it, kept at more than arm's length away from it. No, no, there's a great chasm between. But because of the mercy of God, we are able to, to receive and to, to be involved in all that the kingdom offers. So I love the fact that we are talking about this. And today, we're not just united in love, worship, and mercy, but we are united in our commitment as we would move forward. Today, we're gonna do a couple of things. We're going to celebrate well the ending of our two-year campaign, Unite. And then we wanna talk well about the next one year, that we have in front of us the next year and the things that we feel that God is, uh, is, is calling out of us as we can commit together. You know, when I, was, uh, when I gave my heart to Christ back in high school, I did it at a church in San Jose. Uh, really, well, I should say I made my commitment at a, at a winter camp. And then I immediately started going to this new church in San Jose. I lived in Santa Cruz. And when I went to that church, I immediately met a young lady. Her name was Becky. She would become my wife. We just celebrated 33 years on January 4th. And uh, yeah, and she's definitely the better half of the Sweeney couple. When I lived in Santa Cruz, I was driving 45 minutes to an hour, one way to go to church and to be with her. Now, the reason I connect the church and her together is because often what we did together was at the church. I mean, the church was the lifeblood of who we were as high schoolers, as college, as I would intern at that church and learn ministry at that early age, as I am walking into my calling into ministry and I'm going then to college, uh, getting prepared for ministry life to come. And so uh, she lived right next to the church, not, not too far away. And so it was just always, we were always together. And so one way, 45 minutes to an hour. So that was during the high school years. And I would do that a couple times a week and I didn't mind whatsoever. I just needed to make sure that there was enough gas in my car because she was on the other side of that trip. And then I went to college and it was the same thing. 45 minutes to an hour away, one way. I didn't think much about it other than, was there enough gas in the car to get me there and to get me home? And then I moved an hour and a half away and I still made the trip hour and a half one way and I wasn't worried about the sacrifice whatsoever because I loved my church and I loved Becky. And then I moved two hours away and I said, I think it's time for us to get married. 
<laughs> and so we had to wait a year, but uh, I would drive one way two hours, and I, I didn't even give it a second thought, other than, do I have enough gas to get me home? <laughs> I, mean, I need to get there, and then I need to get home. And there were many nights that I would get home, and I was home on fumes. But, but you know what? I was home. <laughs> and so I had enough. I made it. And you know what I notice is that when we fall in love, we don't look to give the least. We look to give the most. In fact, in fact, it's not even a sacrifice for us to give it. When we are in love, we just do it. In fact, we can't wait to give it and to be a part of it. And this, I'm praying, is what God's doing in us as we reimagine what the body of Christ is all about, who we are to one another, and who we get to be for our city and for our generation. Yeah? Two years ago, we met in this place, we gathered in this place, and we recognized that we were in a difficult place. We were in a very difficult place because we were facing devastating losses as a church. You remember two years ago, everybody was panicked, scattered, nobody knew up from down, dealing with all the issues of the pandemic still, and it was nuts. You couldn't get people to commit to anything. Hardly, you couldn't even hardly get people to go into work. The commitments were so low. And so we were regathering ourselves as a church like every other church. And that's where we were at. But you know what? We chose to unite together. We were facing, as I said, devastating lo losses. We were having to uh, look to having to uh, lay off half of our pastoral staff, which means that our ministries would have come grinding to a halt because there wouldn't have been anyone to lead them. And... And of our size of a church, it can't really be just led by volunteers because you don't have enough time in your day in order to lead these ministries. And so we've got these pastors, and, and so we're looking at that, we're facing that, we're wondering, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna respond? What I love is that we chose to respond. We chose to respond, we unite together. We united because we loved God. You see, we found clarity in the midst of all of that desperation, difficulty, confusion, and chaos. We found clarity. We clarified that we love God, so our lives want to reflect that, and we love people, this city, this generation, and even in the midst of all of our need, we recognize we're here for the needs of others also. You see, we chose to unite and to give and to sacrifice anticipating the day that people would turn to God because we knew that they would. Because of course, there was gonna come a time when people would realize that culture doesn't have the answer. In fact, government doesn't have the answer. In all the places that we're chasing, places that we decided, oh, I gotta go to run down that road. I gotta go figure that out. And it's gonna give me what I want. We knew, we knew, we knew they weren't gonna find what they were looking for. But they would turn to God that there would be a church, Heights Church, that would be ready to receive and that we would be here and we were anxious and eager for that moment. I wanna thank all of those who have given, who have sacrificed, anticipating the care that we could give to one another and anticipating those who would turn their hearts to God, whether we're in person or whether we're online, both of our campuses, absolutely, God uses them. In fact, most of us are using the online church as a hybrid, and so we find ourselves in person one week, we're online the next week, but we are better connected than we were even pre-COVID. And so I love that, and our commitment together is there, it's strong, and we anticipated that there would be people who would turn to God. In fact, I want you to meet one of them that we anticipated. We didn't know his name at the time, but now we do. His name is Greg. Hi, my name is Greg Rash, and I'm a member at Heights Church, and I wanna share my story. Not only do we have fully grown uh, two biological daughters, but we have 11-year-old twins 
that came to us at six weeks of age through the foster adoption system. And what's important to know about them is that however unable their birth mother was to take care of them, they, she was still the only person, the only voice, the only touch that they had had in that nine months in utero and then their six weeks um, after birth with her. So when they were removed from her, that was absolute trauma. And that trauma began to manifest itself as they got mobile and vocal, uh, and it became frequent and sometimes extreme in behavioral issues. So to, to kind of transition to where I was in church, about a year before uh, we brought the kids home, we were at another church and um, kind of with COVID, uh, we got out of the habit obviously of going to church. And um, when they lifted those protocols, I still really struggled to get back into going to church. But uh, I had two overriding thoughts. And one was that I know my children need to experience God in a church family. And also I wanted them to see their dad as someone who earnestly and authentically sought after Christ. So I did commit to going back to church. And the first weekend I did that, I drove out to the church that I used to go to and my son refused to get out of the car. And in the most adult-like voice I've ever heard him use, he said, Dad, you don't understand. I don't fit in here. And I did understand because we'd been through this before with his behavior. So we didn't get out of the car that day and we drove home. But I did ask him, would he be comfortable at Heights? Because we'd been there a few times and he said he would. So the next Sunday, that's where we went and that's where I've been ever since. But uh, on about the third Sunday, the inevitable happened. And when I went to pick him up from child's ministry after the service, I was pulled aside by Miss Tiffany to tell me that my son had a little incident and that he had said something that was hurtful to another child and that I was gonna get a call from Pastor Jennifer who oversees that ministry um, to further discuss what had happened. And I got the call, but it didn't go at all like I anticipated. The first thing that Jennifer did was take responsibility for what her church and ministry and staff did wrong and apologized to me and let me know that steps were already taken to correct that. Then she just listened to let me explain the uniqueness of my son because she was unaware of who he was and how he was. Um, and then she, she just assured me how wanted he was there and how much he was gonna be loved. And then together we made the plan on going forward. But what she did there, she did two key things. And the first was she shared the love of God with me in that phone conversation. And the second was, she really used the wisdom of Solomon to start out with her shortcomings and, and just put me completely at ease. So now my son went from not wanting to go to church to loving to go to church and actually Sunday mornings, I'm getting an earful of, Dad, is it time to go? Can we go yet? Dad, can we go to church yet? And that is inspiring to me. So he gets there and he is proud to be there and he's happy to be there and he knows he's loved and he knows he has value. And the change that that has made in him is that he doesn't want to lose that. So he's not going to mess up. He's very careful with his behaviors now. And so as for me, what I've gotten is, you know, in the services, um, I've gotten to know Tim and Justin uh, and Roger and uh, I've learned of the core values of the church and I see how that staff, it's not just on paper, it's in practice. And that has spoken to me um, and that 
is why I am here at Heights Church. Thank you, Greg. By the way, shameless plug, Greg has a life group, so if you want to join that, uh, he absolutely has got a little bit of room in his group. Um, you can check at the lobby or in the, in the kiosk, and they can help you. Uh, what I love is that we get to share these stories, because there are literally hundreds of stories of people who have come, as we anticipated two years ago, as they have come to us today. So, as I said, we wanted to celebrate and we wanted to talk about what's been accomplished, what have we done over the last two years. Now, if you're visiting with us today, number one, you have impeccable timing. Number two, just know that today is a day when you get to see what kind of a church we are, the commitments that we are willing to make together and who we want to be as we walk at the side of Christ together. And we choose to be these things because we understand it's the gift of mercy that we live from. It is gratitude that we live out of. And this is our response with our life. I love it. So over the last two years, a number of things have been accomplished. We're gonna run through these fairly quickly. The first slide is gonna tell you about our budget giving because this was our greatest need two years ago. Now, as a church, you might be interested to know that we give right at about 5,000 hours of actual serving to one another and to the city. About 5,000 hours every month we give as a church to one another and to the city. That's how much manpower we actually have serving. But when it came to our finances, we were, as I said, devastated in such a difficult spot so our budget goal two years ago was $2,200,000. Our first year in 2022, we hit that goal and exceeded it, $2,259,000. We'll call it uh, $60,000, $260,000. Um, and in year 23, we actually were under that. It wound up being $1,995,000. We'll call it $96,000. And so we ended there. We're about 47000 short of year end for uh, our overall giving. But, you know, overall, you know, we were, we were pleased that it was in that spot because it was way better than where we were two years ago. Another part of what we can see, tangible numbers and things that we're talking about, would be our attendance numbers. People often will ask me, you know, how's the church doing? And I'll say, well, you know, what do you wanna know? And they often will ask me about this. Back in uh, December, I would say 21, we were in the 800s, 900s. Uh, but then in December 22, we're 1,026 was our weekly average. December 23, so just three months ago, we were averaging 1,222, so it was a 20% increase. Uh, as soon as we hit January, we have immediately jumped and we're averaging now 1,300. Uh, we've had a number of Sundays that we were close to 1,400. The point I'm trying to make is that people are very interested in what God has to say about their lives. The church is not an irrelevant place, uh, uh, organization or entity in our community. In fact, it's quite relevant to literally hundreds of people who want to know what does God have to say? How could he meet me right where I'm at? And that's what these numbers help us to get our head around. Now, uh, when we look at this, we recognize that's our weekly average. We do a, uh, we do a census uh, every two years. And so we did a census last year and we know that overall, we've got about 2,800 to 3,000 people who call our church home. And so when you look at the overall size of our church, what God's doing, um, these are just interesting things to help us understand along with stories like Greg. Now, a couple of other things that we were able to accomplish. I'm gonna ask Pastor Jennifer if she would come, our children's pastor, and she's gonna help walk us through a couple of things because right before COVID broke out, we were in the midst of children's renovations and there were some things that we were hoping to accomplish. Well, we didn't want all that to go to the wayside. And so we have dug in and with our pennies, we have done 
our best in order to push the ball forward. And so, Pastor Jennifer, can you talk about what we've been able to accomplish even in such a difficult time? Yes, I'm so grateful and so excited to share what we've been able to accomplish with you. And I'm gonna start with the nursery hallway. So if I can have that slide come up. On your left, you can see that, you know, it looks pretty good. Pretty good, it's nice and clean and tidy. But now you can see what it looks like afterwards. Yes. And we're so proud of it. It's, we're calling it kind of our woodland area. So the nursery is a woodland theme. And that sage green color that you see on the outside will be inside the classrooms as well as that theme. But that hallway isn't just for kids. Many of you have meetings there. You have life groups there in room five. And so we intentionally made room, room five to be an adult space. The two spaces talk well together. The, the colors complement well, but it's its own space. And so we're just so grateful because we want to serve families well. So for our, our heart with this project isn't just that it's new and updated and beautiful, which is nice, but it's really so that more families and more kids will feel connected and welcomed and more kids can come to know Jesus. That's why we're doing it. And so our next slide is of the preschool. Oh, it's actually more nursery. So if you look at it, that's a head-on shot of our nursery room. It's so beautiful and inviting. Um, if I had babies, I would definitely want to go there. My kids are teenagers now, so don't worry, John. We're not having any more. Um, okay, that'd be cool right now. If you were making an announcement, that'd be fun. It would be. Very I don't, creative. That would be interesting for my husband. I'm sure he'd have some thoughts about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Be like, wow, honey. And then that's another head on shot of room five. And so I just love it. That color there out room five is one of my first personal favorites, but we've heard lots of wonderful feedback on that. And then the next slide, I believe, is the preschool hallway. And so this is what it looks like before. You know, it was clean, it was tidy, but this is awesome. And we're so grateful for all of you and your commitment to give towards this project so that more kids feel welcomed and will have a wonderful space where they can experience the love of Jesus. We're calling this our treetop area. So there's clouds down below and you can see the trees up top and we just want it to be really inviting and whimsical space for our preschoolers. And then we have another, here we are. This side right here is kind of our parent corner. And so there's, there's some of Doug Britton's books and Bibles here, resources available for parents, a place for them to sit if they wanna chat with me or another family. And then of course, this is the head on of our preschool area. And when we go into, inside the preschool classrooms, it will be this treetop theme. So it's really fun for that age group. And then we have slides coming up for elementary. Again, it's clean, it's fine, but this is on its way to being awesome. So oh, I have right. to tell you, yeah. there is, before you guys leave today, peek down the elementary hallway because you're gonna see the beginnings of our theme, which we're gonna show next on the next slide. And this right here, we're calling our ombre wall, which by the way, I just found out from Laura that um, Tim told me that it should, it's the technical term is a gradient fade. However, that is a design term. And considering that this is gonna be done in paint, ombre is correct. So I just and, wanted... <laughs> and the reason this is relevant is because our staff makes fun of the names and Ombre. we are back yes. and forth on who's right. We're back and okay. forth on so who's right. So now we have a third entry. So technically okay. I'm correct, but you know. <laughs> anyway, so as you can see, the ombre, it's a lighter turquoise and it goes all the way down to a darker kind of teal color. And then we have our mountains and this area is called the summit. And so it's like, we've gone from the woodland to the treetops, now we're at the summit for those elementary kiddos. And our heart is that they're just wowed when they get there and they realize that they're loved, they're wanted, and this is gonna be a great space for them to come to know Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's really what we've been doing. And we want to say thank you because we couldn't do it out without your generosity and your commitment that's right. to the Unite campaign. Yeah. Well, thank you for your vision for this. I know you and Laura have been the ones driving this and coming up with all the beautiful designs. So and Roger. You're doing a tremendous job. Yeah, Roger and Marshall, I know, are and Phil making Richardson. it happen. Phil Richardson, yes. a lot of 
Love it, love it, love it. So thank you, and uh, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Jennifer. Can we greet her? I'm gonna let her take off. A couple of other things that we've been able to accomplish in the last uh, two years. Let's throw this slide up here. So a number of things, but some of these we talked about. We've been able to do the, uh, uh, the quad completion. You re- may remember there used to be modular buildings, two more modular buildings out, out there. Then there was a whole lot of dirt. Now there's a whole lot of grass. There's a fire pit. It looks beautiful. It's something that we actually utilize. That's a great, great space. We got to uh, do some roof repair, which is so sexy and fun, and nobody cares because nobody sees it unless you're the one sitting under that drip, drip, drip. Anyway, we got to do that, and it's crazy expensive to do those. Lobby flooring and paint, furnishings, lobby bathrooms, sanctuary paint. You got to enjoy all that as you came in the lobby today. Of course, the nursery, the preschool, elementary hallway, we did all that. Our staff salaries were funded. And I just cannot tell you enough how important this was because literally without them, this church comes to a grinding halt because they are so incredibly needed. And you can't just go grab great, amazing people in order to fill those roles. And we had no desire to do that anyway because we absolutely love the gold of our staff that we have right now. So can we just give them a hand because they absolutely deserve that. We funded their salaries and make sure that they're still here because we knew that when people started coming back, we were gonna need every single one of them. And absolutely, we had. Another amazing thing is that we've had over 400 commitments to Christ. That number is actually probably closer to 563 baptisms. We uh, baptized 47 last year. I mean, it's just amazing. And that's what I'm talking about when it comes to uh, the people that we've anticipated returning and turning their hearts to God and us as a church being ready for those moments, but that's not, it's not the time when they, uh, when, when, when they show up, we heard somebody came. It's like, no, 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 those are things you do ahead of time to prepare your home. So when someone comes to your door, you're ready to receive them. Yes? And this is what we've gotten to do, whether you're a person or you're part of our online campus. That online campus is another thing that we have dove into, and about half our church, we attend online at any given Sunday. We're a hybrid. We're online one week, we're in person another, and I can't, can't uh, uh, say enough just how that has in, uh, changed and enhanced who we are as a church, and it's allowed us to be more connected now than we were pre-COVID. And uh, so I love that we have that option with us today. Our strategy as a leadership team, as a board, when we got together two years ago, we said we've got to keep our staff team together. If we lose them, we lose all the building blocks of being able to continue to move forward in strength as a church. But if we hold on to them, well, we've got everything we need to begin building again. So thank you for making that happen. And I love the fact that we gave we sacrificed, anticipating that people would return. And that's part of that 400, 500 commitments to Christ in the last two years. And I want you to meet another one of those. We didn't know his name two years ago, but today we know his name is Timothy. I first came to Heights Church in July of 2023. Uh, I remember it was uh, it was a Tuesday night. I was uh, I was at home reading scripture. I had only been following Jesus for about six months, but I was all on my own, just doing some reading. And I was reading in the book of uh, Acts where Luke was talking about the importance of fellowship. So I started thinking um, about a place to go. I drove down here and uh, walked in and met Grace, who was wonderful and uh, just uh, greeted me warmly and called Pastor Justin, who was the pastor on call. And I sat down and just started uh, bombarding him with, uh, with, with difficult questions, I think, because uh, I've been doing a lot of reading. I kind of inadvertently got myself uh, caught up in Christian apologetics and some fairly deep subjects um, for, for a new guy, I guess. So um, it was kind of ordained for, for Justin and I to meet, I think. So I just, I, I look forward to Sundays every week. I really do. The, the message is always fantastic. I always, I always just feel empowered by, by the message. Uh, we've got the, 
the greatest worship team. We really do. Our, our musicians are just stellar. Uh, I just I enjoy the the music every week. Um, I got baptized, which was super exciting. And uh, life for me before Heights Church was was lonely. I moved out to Citrus Heights from Texas for a job, uh, which I enjoy, and I'm glad I did it. But I don't have any family here, and I didn't really make any real connections here. So um, it was really nice to come into the church and be able to, to find friendship and, and fellowship and just camaraderie. Things have changed for the better for me since I came to Heights Church. Um, I'm just filled with joy in my heart all the time. Uh, I really am. I just, uh, I was fairly new to the faith. Um, I had kind of a long journey to Jesus. Um, but I, I'm getting such a great, deeper, deeper grasp. Uh, the, the, the people I've met, the, the friendships I've made, uh, just people who are always willing to answer questions. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's, just, it's, just been, uh, it's just been great, the fellowship and, uh, and the warmth and um, just the camaraderie. And, and uh, it's been really, really good for my soul. And that's why I love coming to Heights Church. So thank you for giving and sacrificing because we chose to unite two years ago. We're here today. And all this is and way more has been accomplished. I wish we could share every one of those stories, all of our stories. But just know when you look around this room, everybody has a story. When we think about all those who are online with us right now. You have a story. We're all part of this amazing story called Heights Church. And so we wrap up Unite today, and now we begin moving forward. Where do we go from here? And I've been getting asked this question a lot, and of course, as a leadership team, as a board, we've been thinking about this for months ahead and thinking about what is it that we really feel like we need to do. And strengthening our church is absolutely what we know we need to do. We are crystal clear about why we're here. We're here so that our city, so that our generation will experience God. And when we experience God and we, we, we find ourselves in the presence of God and we find ourselves giving our lives, our hearts to Jesus because of the mercy of God, we respond by giving our lives. We get to experience God together also as a church we know why we're here, and we want to continue to do it even better. So when it think about what we're doing, there are uh, three levels of giving. We've been talking about this, and so I, again, I told you that we give about 5,000 hours per month of man hours towards serving one another and serving our city. But one of our needs right now that we really need to pay attention to and think about as a church would be our level of giving. So let's throw this up. So over the next year, what we're wanting to do, we need to get to at least level one, which we're about, uh, we were about uh, 50,000 short uh, of our goal this last year. So we're about, would have been 70,000 short of that goal of level one if, it, if we had this budget last year. So there's some growth that we need in order to meet our budget. This funds only the needs of our current size and that actually was the size we were back in December, but we know actually we've already grown uh, by over 100 people since then. Uh, there are no projects funded, but we can continue as we are and offering what we offer currently with our ministries if we are able to meet level one. But we're really hoping and praying that we'd be willing to stretch and get to level two. 2,400,000, and you say, man, that's a lot of money. It is a lot of money, but you need to understand for a church our size, most churches our size are double that budget, if not triple. And so when we think about what we're doing, you need to know, oh, we make the most of everything we have. I mean, if your kids are in the, in the nursery, tell you what, they drop a, a goldfish out of their mouth, we're gonna pull that up. We're not gonna give it to another kid, but we'll save it as a snack for them later. I mean, we are good at what we do. 
Pastor Jennifer right now needs me to say, we don't actually do that. <laughs> We're not recycling goldfish. <laughs> but it's an idea we should explore. Anyway, uh, hopefully we don't have to do that. Uh, it will, 2,400,000 would fully fund our ministry budgets, which means we're not just bare bones showing up. We're able to fully fund them and begin moving forward. And that means more and more outreach so that we can reach further, such as our student ministries on our campuses and being able to do some things there that we currently are not able to do. That would be an example. Students Love This City is a project we'd love to be able to fund. It's coming up on spring break. And so that's our students serving our schools here in the city um, and then also some of our, our civic buildings. Also, our Wednesday night is Celebrate Recovery Children's Ministry. When we gather here, we have a bunch of small groups that meet here on Wednesday night. We'd love to be able to have children's ministry. People ask us, why don't we have that now? Why don't we have children's ministry when Celebrate Recovery launches again? Why don't we have that? Because that's about a thirty to $35,000 commitment. That's what it takes in order for us to have that and consistently have it each and every week. And so that's why we don't have it now. But boy, wouldn't it be amazing if we could? And that's part of what we'd be able to do. We want to be able to finish the quad project with a sunshade over the playground so the kids can use it, add lights so we can use it at nighttime uh, for more than just the fire pit. And then, of course, an online church investment because we need to continue to make that more and more personal. And so we want to be thinking about our online church uh, uh, investment there as well. And then our level three giving would allow for us to have a junior high intern and a college intern because those two ministries are growing and we're in need now of someone else to come in and to begin leading and helping us lead those ministries. I mean, thank God that those ministries are growing. And so we want to be a part of that. Um, in fact, I was just in a doctor's office. You're gonna say, that didn't actually happen. This actually happened two weeks ago. I was in a doctor's office. I was uh, there because I had RSV. So I'm, you know, I look horrible and I'm wearing a Heights Church hat. The nurse looks at me and she says, Heights Church, right? And I said, yeah. She goes, you guys have children's uh, or student ministries? I'm like, yeah. And she said, great, I got three teenagers. Um, what are the times? Yeah. Boom, they've already been coming. <laughs> they may be in this service right now. We need, we need help at our junior high and in our high school ministries. And so when I think about what God's doing, these are the three levels of our giving. You say, well, I can't write that check. You don't need to. You just need to think, God, what's gonna be my part? Now, I'd love it if you would pull out, if you would pull out this card. And I want you to be thinking about this card. It's in your planner right now. And you could say, wow. What is my best? What does that represent right now? You say, Craig, when I, when I think about giving, what would be my part in this? What, what would, why would I do that? And the reason is because we know that this is why we're here as God's church. And there's more Greg's and there's more Timothy's. There's so many more that we're here for, not just for today, but for tomorrow. And a year from now, should Jesus tarry? And we think, about, we think about our commitment. And as you're holding this in your hand, I want you to think about the tangible people, because this isn't about numbers. This is about individual people. I want you to think about the lives that your giving could touch. I got one more person I want you to meet, and her name is Suzette. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Suzette. I came to Heights Church for Easter in 2018. For three years, I was driving by this street, seeing the sign, getting the holy tug, and ignoring it until, until Easter. And that Easter, for whatever reason, hot mess at the end of myself, said, I need to go to church. I need to get back to church. The first ministry that I um, really leaned into was classics. And Pastor John is so incredibly knowledgeable and kind. And he really cares about people. And so 
I invited my parents because I really wanted them to get back into church. And I remember the first time they said yes, and they came and I said, Mom, when's the last time we were in church together? And she said, at your wedding? I said, no, not in a church together, in church together. And she said, I think it was your christening. I started um, Keys to Freedom actually was the, the second thing I did. I didn't really know what it was all about, Keys to Freedom, to begin with. But I heard somebody in one of the intros say, if you have any challenges, any hangups, any, anything you need, you know, that's just bugging you, um, come on down. So I did. And it helped me, gave me a set of tools, if you will, that I could use to deal with so many different challenges in my life. It also helped me realize that I had a lot of bad behaviors that I had not not even been aware of uh, until that point. Another way that the church has helped me is true discipleship. I've been to a lot of churches and I go just long enough to get myself out of myself. To I come to the end of myself and I say, I, I need to get back to church and I go. And I stay just long enough to feel better and then I'd go right back to the same behaviors I remember sitting with uh, Pastor Cheryl and telling her, never again, I'm never leaving. I'm never gonna not walk with God ever again in my life. I'm gonna follow him. Because every time I try to do it on my own, I mess it up. (laughs) And I know that if um, if I follow, I can continue to walk in freedom. For the first time in my life, there I'm not doing anything that I feel like God's telling me to stop doing. And I'm doing everything that He's asking me to do in the moment. I used to think that I was uh, too much, too bold, too loud, too much. But what I've learned is that's a lie and that I'm just the right amount of bold to do what he needs me to do every day when he says, pray for that lady or talk to that girl or whatever it is that he wants me to say, because I will, because I'm bold enough to do it. Before Heights Church, um, My life was a mess. (laughs) It was. I was overworked, overtaxed, overstressed, overwhelmed, addicted, anxious, mess. Um, One of my biggest challenges, or the way I saw it anyway, one of my biggest challenges was that my marriage was a huge mess. And uh, uh, I blamed my husband for 98% of, you know, the yuck of our marriage and was completely blind to my part in it. Completely blind, because I was so focused on his behavior instead of mine. And uh, in Soul Care with with Jen, she helped me so gently and so kindly explore my part in, um, in the downfall of my marriage. I'll never forget the day uh, I was in my chair time. This is late. 2021, I remember crying out to God and saying, Lord, how long? What do I have to do? I've tried everything. I don't know what else to do. And the Holy Spirit said, are you done? Are you done trying? When you're done trying, Suzette, I'll claim victory over your marriage in my name. I'm so thankful for all the little steps that God lined up for me right here at Heights. 
so that I could lean into healing, not just for me, but for my whole family. We still have a long way to go, but we're gonna celebrate our 38, 39th wedding anniversary in March. Mm, by the grace of God. And that's why I'm here at Heights Church. <laughs> oh. Thank you, Greg and Timothy and Suzette for sharing your stories with us today. And of course, our other weeks as well with Sarah and uh, Brandy, being able to share their stories. Those are so important for us to be able to hear them. Well, as we are um, coming to this point, I know that many of us are excited to give. It's like, hey, we're there. We're ready. It's like we've been anticipating coming to this moment right here and thinking about, God, what? is my offering. What will I do over the next 12 months to make all this and more possible? None of us are gonna write the whole check and it's never meant to be that way. We are just meant to bring our part. God, what is it that you're calling out of me? And I need, I need to say right now, I want you to know that as a staff, as a board, we're not asking you to do anything other than what we're doing. Every single one of us as a staff on our board, our leadership team, every one of us, we tithe, we give back to God each and every month because we believe in the mission here that God is doing through Heights Church. Now, when I think about the things that we could give, what would we give, where would we start? Many of us, we already are giving and we think about what would I maybe give more? Or I could think about where would I start because currently I'm not really giving consistently and we could start and I, uh, with something. We think, where would I start? And I shared with you guys a couple of weeks ago, if, if 1,000 of us just gave $29 more per month, that would put us in our level two, wouldn't meet all those things, but it would put us in that level two definitely of our, of our funding and in our budgets, and that would be so amazing. I know that many of us can do more than that, that we wanna do more than that, that we will do more than that. On your card, you'll notice that there is a, a potential of my giving. If you give this amount, whether it's monthly, then of course it tells you how much over the year that it would add up to. And we tried to make this as simple as possible. Now, I want you to know that if you're part of our online campus, there's a link dropping into the chat right now. Now, what you're going to see as you click on this is the uh, same set of questions. It'll look a little different for you but you'll be able to go through and answer these same questions that we're gonna be doing in person. We made it simple. Name, I think you might have that figured out. Email, phone, address, so we know who you are. And for those who are keeping our pledge the same, just check the box, keeping my pledge the same. Thank you. For those of us who are saying, hey, I'm gonna do something a little different, I prayerfully commit to step out in faith financially and to pledge the following amount, whether it's gonna be weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually, people give in all of those different ways. My recurring pledge, whatever it's gonna be, monthly or weekly, whatever, is gonna be, and then you would write in that amount. My one-time offering, if you brought an offering today to help us replenish the cupboards, because we've arrived here, but just so. And an offering would be, super helpful for us as we are looking at current needs. And so my current offering would be this. And then there's those who wanna give gifts of other, uh, other than uh, just cash. We've already had uh, uh, some people who said, hey, I've got some stocks that I would like to donate. Fine, you can write that in there and then just check, please call me. And then Mark Newton, our accountant, is going to be calling you. He's gonna stay up all night long tonight. So he may call you at three in the morning, just make sure you pick up. It's good. He's going to be fine. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. And then you could put that in there. He could take care of all of that. No problem on a phone call. If you are filling out the rest of this, the electronic uh, financial uh, piece, then just go ahead and walk through that. And uh, he will uh, look to you and call you and make sure that everything is as it should be. If you're doing this online, you need to know that as you fill this out online, Mark will call you because not all of the information will transfer to him. He'll need to call you to confirm some of these numbers with you. And uh, so just know that that will happen uh, for the online pledges. 
We've actually had people turning in pledge cards throughout the week already leading up to today. And I just wanna thank you for praying about this, considering it, and then making your commitment. We're so grateful that you would wanna be a part of this. And so what I'm asking you to do, Pastor Ryan's gonna lead us in a song just mainly for us to be thinking as we would honor God with the pledge we'd make. You can fill this out and then put it in an envelope so that nobody, you know, sees your stuff. And then we have these buckets here at the front. And when you're ready, you can bring yours up and just put it in here. And then I've got something really special that we're gonna end with today. And so I'd ask if you just go back to your seat and then hang on, and we're gonna end uh, today with something really special. But right now I want us to pray and to considering, I think many of us already know what we wanna give. If we're still in that moment, we still haven't heard from the Lord. Let's hear from the Lord right now and let's make our decision, whether we're in person or whether we're online. So Father, we thank you for the moment right here. And God, when we look back to Exodus 35, it was a moment just like this. The people of God were being called, called to give, to give their best for the mission of God. Lord, it says in that passage that they brought gold, silver, bronze, Some of them brought skins of animals because that was the commodity of the day. Some of them brought fine hair from sheep and goats because that was the commodity of the day. And God, you found a way to use all of it. Lord, those who would bring skins were used for the tabernacle to be built. Lord, those who would bring sheep and goat's hair, you used it to make the garments for the priests that were sacred the gold, the silver, and the bronze. You used that for multiple purposes. But God, what's so amazing is that you found a way for those who had a lot to give and for those who had a little to give. But all of it was meaningful. All of it was useful and set apart for you and for your purposes. So Father, our gift today, whether we think it's little or big, Lord, what we know is we're not all gonna give the same, but our sacrifice can be the same and our blessing will be as well. So Father, we put this in your hands now. We thank you that you've given us enough to take care of our families and Lord, to be able to give back to the mission and the movement of God here at our city and in our generation. When you know what your pledge is, fill that out, put it in the envelope, and you could bring it forward as Pastor Ryan leads us in worship. praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you oh we live for you Jesus the name above every other name Jesus the only one Every breath we could ever breathe, 
Father, as we bring our offering to you, Lord, it's no trouble. When we understand mercy, what we have received, when we understand, Lord, what you've actually done in our life, Lord, we want others to experience it. We want others to have it. And Lord, what we know is that we are Heights Church. Our online campus, our in-person, we are Heights Church. And together, we're incredibly strong as we would choose to bring our best. So Lord, I thank you for the offerings that have been brought today, the commitments that we choose to make because we are united in love and in worship and in mercy. And Lord, now in our commitments, help us to be strong and full of faith as we would move into this next year. And Lord, I pray that you would bless those who make the choice to sacrifice, to give, to give something they love for something they love even more. Lord, we're not looking to give the least. We're looking to give the most, to put thought into it. And we pray it in Jesus' mighty name. If we agree with the prayer, could we say amen? Amen, amen and amen. Yeah, let's give the Lord applause. I believe he deserves that. I want to invite our staff team to join me. We're going to wrap up today with a really quick, fun lightning round here. Uh, can we just extend that applause? They need a little more encouragement. They're going too slow. They really need to sprint to get up. Yeah, now they're doing a little better. Okay, that's better. That's better. We need to work on y'all sprinting skills. We're going to start doing that tomorrow. Okay, anyway, staff meeting, meet on the lawn. Uh, it's going to be awesome. Uh, this is your staff, and I want you to know they have led you well. It's been an amazing two years, and I could not, I could not have done what we did without them and our board. They're phenomenal. Uh, Pastor Ryan's the one who's joined us just most recently, and that was three years ago. The rest of them, uh, we're talking like seven and 15 years, 14 years from the very beginning. There's a long, all, all kinds of uh, range here. We love the maturity. Okay, so here's the lightning round. They each have one minute in order to share, share. Well, well some of you need 90 seconds. In one to one and a half minutes to share their heart for this next year. I want them to hear from you. And they're getting a little cranky, I could tell. So um, that's all right. They'll work it out tomorrow in our staff meeting on me. So I, I can already see it coming. We're gonna give it to Pastor John first and foremost. Let's give it up for Pastor John, leading our classics ministry. Hello, Rubber Buggy. I'm Rubber Buggy to you. God bless you. There you go. We Donald love Duck. this church You're so much. What? You're famous for it, Donald Duck, uh, yeah. A.K.A. Yeah, I've been asked if I did Disney stuff. I wish. No. <laughs> Look. I'm the pastor to what we call the classics. Anybody over 55, right. you belong with us. <laughs> but you are with us right now. We love our church. We love the, the um, mix that we have from the youngest to the oldest. Your seniors in this church are active. And we want you to realize that this next year will be super special for our seniors. They are prayer warriors. We have over 70 of them on a prayer chain. We have prayer requests going out every day almost to these 70 people. So we're active that way. We do luncheons. We do outreaches. We do projects. And this year is going to be sweet and special. And uh, if you want to be a part of that, you don't even have to be 55 or better. Come on down. We'll take you in our class. We'd love to have you. And we meet every Sunday, especially 9 a.m. Bible study, verse by verse. Love to have you. God bless. What he didn't tell you is that Pastor Craig has PTSD that he's 55 or better this year. Um, oh, shots fired. Wow. Uh, I'm sorry. That was just too easy. What? Hey, um, <laughs> 
Yeah, what can we say? But we trip. <laughs> what was that? You I just got a fired. Disney trip. This is my last Sunday with you. Thank you. I'm yeah, kidding. That's it. <laughs> totally kidding. I truly love Heights Church. I can't say enough about the honor and the privilege it is to be the Life Group's hospitality and uh, young adults college pastor here at Heights. Um, it's been a long journey, and what I know is stories like Timothy's of people finding community connection and joy. Uh, in, in our life groups, if I could tell you the story after story after story of what I hear from our leaders, what I hear God's doing in these groups, um, it's going to be an amazing year moving forward. And it's been an amazing season behind us of just God growing people. Here's what I do know is in the next season, we're going to see people step into ministry that have never done ministry before, because I know this, yeah. that God doesn't always call the equipped, but he equips the call. There you go. I got it right twice. You That's did. Amazing. You got it right twice today. I know. And Not so, like you normally do. If you're you, feeling you the did a good job. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Yeah, I got. I, I have short time. <laughs> so I know that if you're feeling that tug on your heart to serve, to step in, to lean in, to lead, do it. You're freaking me out. Um, but because I know, <laughs> he's got the time. That on. God wants to use you. <laughs> and you're done. Amen. Uh, yeah, I'm setting my own timer. Three minutes on the clock. Got it. <laughs> Hi, my name is Tim, and I'm your friend. Anyway, uh, I'm the online pastor here, a teaching pastor, and I get to be the men's pastor as well. And Really excited about what God has been doing over the last couple of years, and as we're looking forward, you know, we've had, as far as our online uh, church, we have had some of the biggest uh, minutes. Okay, now I'll start it. <laughs> yeah. <I'll keep. laughs> and uh, some of the well, most well-attended Sundays we've had in, uh, trust me, in uh, 700 attendees on one of our Sundays this past month. I mean, yeah, it is growing, yeah. God is using yeah. it. It is amazing, amazing community. Um, also, and this past uh, Friday, we had 90, 90 plus men gathering to yeah. chase after yeah. legacy. Yeah. That was just Friday. I am so excited what God is doing uh, in and through this church to be a part of it, to watch God work in your lives and then use you to reach others in the name of Jesus. It is so exciting. Hold on to your seats. God's got big stuff happening. And so, yeah, we're excited about that. And then Doug. Pa uh, Doug yeah, could, Pastor, yeah, Doug is not with us right now, but you could just share a quick yeah, word about married Doug life. Yeah, Doug isn't with us. He runs our married life. And I'll just say this in a nutshell. Marriages are being incredibly improved, saved, yeah. built. He is doing an amazing job. His team is amazing. There are m many stories coming out of that ministry yeah. every day. Yeah. And I uh, just know that... Uh, God's using it, and so married life is killing it. They're yeah. just doing a great job. So yeah, Doug would have done a better job than I did just now. But yeah, that's good. That's good. We'll anyway. tell him you tried. All right, cool. And I hate just so you know, I got both of those done in two minutes. Anyway. Wow, Tim. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm Jennifer Alessio, and I serve as a children's pastor here at Heights Church, and I do a bunch of other things. Um, our mission and vision for Heights Kids is for kids to experience God every Sunday and to grow to become fully devoted followers of Jesus. And because of your generosity, that's happening. We have kids accepting Christ on a Sunday. We have kids getting, accepting Christ at kids camp, kids getting baptized, and it's all because of you. Yeah. I just want to say thank you so much. And we're going to be leaning in harder to that this year. And so at Heights 45, we're going to be leaning into it. We want to grow our ministry so that we can serve more kids and more families. And, of course, we have the Heights Kids Camp, which is one of our biggest outreaches coming up this June, June 11th through the 13th. We'd love for you to volunteer. We'd love for you to send your kids. Um, and, of course, we have Trunk or Treat coming. I just want to thank you again for your generosity. And because of your generosity and what we're able to do with the Children's Revitalization Project, more kids are going to be excited about coming. Because it's not just about spaces. Yeah. We, of course, want something beautiful for our children. They deserve that. But it's about the kids who aren't here yet. 
So when they come, they visit, they're like, wow, they really want me here and I want to be here. And then they get to come to know Jesus. So thank you. And I'm Jen Yarbrough, Associate Pastor of Restoration Ministries and Administration. And I think you can join me in saying some of our pastors need some soul care. I'm thinking, guys, yeah. (laughs) I tell everybody all the time, I have the best job ever because I get to see so many lives changed in one-on-one settings oftentimes. And God just loves showing off. And he is totally capable of doing amazing work. So we're running our Keys to Freedom, Soul Care, Grief Share. We've got some great studies from Doug Britton as well. The most exciting current issue is we're going to be relaunching Celebrate Recovery, which we used to run here. It's a faith-based 12-step recovery group. Super excited about that. We're working with the eight-person team right now, a leadership team, to get them going and dialed in and trained really well and then we'll get that launch sometime in 2024 also our women this year we're highlighting the theme of magnify which i am so excited about as we lean into that we've got some events coming up throughout the year as we watch that unfold and lean into being fully devoted followers of jesus there you go awesome Hi, my name is Bronson. I oversee all of student ministries, 6th grade to 12th grade, and the past 12 months have been an incredible ride. A lot of you have heard about what student ministry is about. It's not just students experiencing Jesus, experiencing God, but we even take a big part on making sure that the family matters to the students, too. You guys have heard stories like this, but... So many incredible moments because of your giving and partnering with us, your generosity. We took 30 kids to Thrive Unleash, which is a weekend conference. That's incredible. We have kids who feel called to ministry. That's incredible. And the future of this place is bright. I'm so excited what 2024 has. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for all you do. And let's see what God's going to do this year. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Um, I'm, I'm Ryan. I oversee worship and production here at Heights Church. And I do also want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you for partnering with us in this last, these last two years so that we could still be sitting here today and celebrating what God has done. And it's amazing. It really is. And, you know, I, I've, I've come to realize that, you know, if you look at our online website and you see our vision statement, it's people experiencing God. And I really believe in our gatherings, whether it's here on Sunday morning or at youth or, you know, soon to be Celebrate Recovery or any other event, like these gatherings, it becomes about people experiencing God, you know, and it's not just something where we just check it off the list and we're like, we just got it done today, but it's like, no, it's, it's, we're coming from a place that it's a necessity. You know, I share this with the team backstage before coming up here, you know, just that heart and desire to be in God's presence because there's no better place to be. So thank you. We have a lot to look forward to in 2024. So yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I tell you what, I'm going to have you guys just stay up here. I'm going to invite up uh, Jason Baker. He is uh, one of our board members and also uh, one of the two campaign directors, and I'm going to have him pray out. But I just want, I do want to say that um, this team, they are truly amazing people, and I, I hope you can see we love each other. We care about each other, and we're here for one another, and obviously we're here for you. We're here to serve you and your family so that you can experience God and, and get to receive all that he has for you and for your family. So Jason, come up. I love it. Uh, if you could wrap us up in prayer, we would, uh, let's just thank God for all that he's done and is going to do. Absolutely. You know, Pastor Craig has taught us before to love God and love others. This staff here behind me loves you so much. And that's why I want to continue to do the same to you. We love others through our gifts. Let's close in his name. Gracious God, we thank you. You've blessed this church through so many difficult times, through so many difficult issues. You have blessed us in so many ways. Jehovah Jireh, you have given us all the provisions we need. We ask that you continue to do the same, that we allow lives to be touched, to your word to be grown, 
through this church. God, allow this church to be known as one that loves others. We ask that your word to be continued as we go on our day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 If you're here today and you say, you know what, I would love to be able to talk with somebody about finding Christ today. All right, raise my hand tables right over here. We're gonna invite our prayer partners to come forward and they're here to pray with you about whatever you need. And I'm gonna be right over here. If you're visiting with us, I'd love to be able to say hello to you. Otherwise, thanks for being here, you guys. It's been an amazing day. Go with God. Giving is one of the greatest joys that you and I can experience in life. And I love how we are promised in scripture in the book of Luke, that our gift will return to us in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more. It actually says running over. And that's the awesome reason why you can step into giving here at Heights Church. And by supporting Heights Church, you and I have the privilege of stepping into the miraculous work that God is doing in the lives of others. I mean, when we think about it, God is our great provider. He has given us everything that we need. And we get to give a portion of that back so that miraculous work will continue in the lives of others. By giving to support Heights Church, you are actually helping to provide many wonderful opportunities, such as creating a safe place for our kids to learn about Jesus. Yes, and bringing students a sense of purpose and belonging through all of our student ministries that we offer here at Heights Church. We get to see people's spirits lifted higher as they engage in our Sunday worship service, either at part of our online campus or here in person. We're actually watching God's word come alive as we learn about its meaning for us today in our Sunday messages. And also we get to open doors for meaningful connections and friendships through our life groups. And we're touching lives overwhelmed by fear, by grief, by addiction and hopelessness. And we are helping to transform them and helping people to experience peace, hope and joy through the restoration ministries. You and I can leave a legacy literally for eternity as, as we see lives changed forever through the church. Will you pray about what God would have you give today? I know that he wants to bring the joy of giving into your life and see lives transformed through you.